27, we have new um, articles where it's really hard to tell what is relevant and what is not. So x-ray photos used in paternity case, x-rays used in veterinary science, x-rays used to treat lupus, this is an affliction of the skin, and rheumatism. In Britain, they write the US literature on x-rays is low quality but readable. Resistance of selenium changes when exposed to x-rays. Racers react differently to x-rays. Um, the British Army um, administration is convinced that x-rays are useful for uh, locating bullets. And US law courts begin to debate liability. Liability in the sense of if you do have x-ray damage of a patient, who is liable? Is it the doctor? Is it the assistant? Who? What is relevant? This British parliamentary hearing about x-rays. Physicists argue that x-rays touch atom within the molecule. Um, the induction coil is used also in telegraphy both in tele telegraphy and x-rays, so it, you know, it gets developed in many new ways because of the telegraphy also. Ionization begins to work as a detector, um, a detector of x-rays. It's argued that x-rays are the same as Becquerel rays, as what we would call radioactivity. It was also the opposite was argued. And it was argued that light from sugar can also penetrate substances. Fins and rays treat lupus. This is yet another discovery of invisible rays by a, a doctor in Copenhagen uh, called Finson, and he used it to treat a um, uh, skin um, affliction. And hairy nevuses, nevi, uh, were treated with x-rays. It was argued that lungs uh, could be healed, or almost healed, when they... Um, um, you know, tuber tu uh, tubercular lungs could be healed. Here's the term deep t tissue traumatism. So traumatism is a medical term for, for damage to, to the tissue. And deep tissue refers to subcutaneous tissue, that is uh, tissue under the skin. That's the deep tissue, so inside your body. So the, the tissue inside your body can be damaged by x-rays. It's argued that skin effects are largely due to idiosyncrasy. Um, in other words, it's specific to particular people. So some people are damaged. Some people's skin is damaged by x-rays, but others are immune. Tesla argues, the now famous Tesla in the US, uh, perhaps because there's a car named after him. Uh, I'm not really sure why he is so famous, but... Uh, he certainly is very famous, and he argued in a publication that not the faintest hurtful action was noted uh, when dealing with x-rays. An, uh, an argument that um, x-rays impact anthrax, but not uh, uh, TB bacilli. And it was argued again that some people can see x-rays. What's relevant? And now we're in 1898. X-rays were used to um, determine crystalline structures. It was argued, it was argued that comets give off x-rays and it was argued that any skin reactions uh, coming after x-ray treatment or x-ray photography were caused by the sparks from the spark gap, not by the x-rays. And here's a, a, a cute little quote also. It tells uh, some of the says something of the the state of mind at the time in 1898. So this is a, an instrument maker called Eisenthal of of um, German. He he was in London, but he was of German extraction, so he spoke German. And he visited the discoverer of X-rays, um, the German physicist Röntgen. And he, and Eisenthal uh, later wrote, he inquired of me, of me whether we in England knew of the biological effects of the x-rays and from a large portfolio produced some telling photographs of skin afflictions 
and asked me to make the facts known over here. On my return to England, I reported to the Röntgen Society, however, without evoking much interest regarding Röntgen's warning. So the Röntgen Society later became the Radiological Society. Um, but the, the point here is that some people were very worried about um, the, the biological effects of x-rays and probably most people were not really interested in that topic. So, um, and moving on to slide 37. And now we're um, trying to uh, move a little faster. Um, in 1899, there were histological investigations into healthy and diseased tissue. It was argued that soft, tip, uh, soft tubes have more impact on the skin. Soft tubes were a way of talking about tubes where the um, degree of evacuation was not very high. The hard tubes had very uh, high um, degrees of evacuation. In the US, damages were awarded um, for x-ray uh, injury, uh, $25,000, a lot of money at the time. There were bacteriological investigations, and there were also investigations into protozoa and other low forms of life, uh, you know, both those cases, the impact of x-ray on them. That, the, the, here's some quotes. The main factors to be considered in x-ray therapy are strength of primary current, capacity of coil, the intensity of the rays in the state of vacuum of the tubes, the duration of frequency of the sittings, distance of tube from exposed region, susceptibility of the tissue exposed. And on the other side on the right is the whole subject of Röntgen therapy is still a vexed one. There are those who would deny its raison d'être, doubting if it's really capable of producing physiological effects. Others who, while admitting these effects, are of the opinion that they signify dangerous damage to the body. So it's still unclear whether there's any relevance of um, X-ray damage um, on the right. And on the left we have um, should we call it a, a summarizing of, of best practices or, or summarizing of relevant issues when talking about best practices. Um, both of these turned out to be very relevant to people in the field. Um, and in fact, we can now say, so with hindsight, that what it says on the left is all correct. It's all uh, absolutely, these are indeed the main factors to be considered. Um, and it says x-ray therapy, as you see. So, so the word therapy is, is now um, connected with x-rays. Um, and, and it's beginning to, to, to get established gradually. Uh, one of the things that, that is worth noting here is that if in, in 1896, you, you couldn't really have thought of x-ray therapy as relevant and, let's say, a potential market because you could not have seen that x-rays would actually do anything to the human body. You, you could think of them at first only as entertainment, and then gradually you would begin to see the utility of x-rays for um, diagnostic purposes, as a diagnostic tool, but only much later would it become clear that there might conceivably be a market for x-ray therapy. And I want to really flag up here a very important technological development. Um, I mean, I could have picked out many uh, technological developments, but, but here's one that, that clearly had um, a big impact also uh, for X-ray therapy. And the, so it's the, the Coolidge X-ray tube, which was invented in 1912. And the, the main point of this X-ray tube is that the cathode was heated. And 
with the, the heated cathode, it became much easier to produce a cathode, uh, produce the cathode rays leaving off from the cathode and, and then impinging upon the anti-cathode. Now, the way we think about it, of course, now with the, with the currents here, is we, we, we know that, that, that the um, current flowing across the vacuum is a stream of electrons. And if you studied physics, you also know that if you heat a metal, it's easier to get electrons to, to um, uh, um, be emitted. And so before the Coolidge ray tube, the only way to adjust the cathode rays or the stream of electrodes from the, from the cathode was by, um, well, that's not true, not the only way, but let's, let's go through the, the different ways you could, could affect it. You could um, reduce the vacuum in the tube. That would increase the current. You could um, increase the voltage across it, and you could increase the current across it. So you you know stronger battery, um, better interrupter, better induction coil. Um, but the main point was that 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 all these were um, difficult things to control, and you basically got better control of the production of X rays if you heated the cathode. It would be much much easier to. Um, um, to get an electrical current going. Also an important issue, actually, I should mention this sort of as an aside, because the, the, the soft and the hard tube, the, if you have, um, it, it would produce a different spectrum of uh, X-rays, and that would have an impact on the photography that you are making, or indeed, if you're thinking of therapy, of how deep into the body the x-rays would penetrate. Um, so when you change the vacuum of the tube, you're actually changing the, the, the spectrum of the x-rays that you're produced. Whereas if you have the heated cathode, that doesn't affect the spectrum itself. So it's much easier to keep the, the performance of the tube stable with the x-ray tube. And you also get a much higher energy irradiation. This is important if you're doing therapy, because if you want especially for therapy of, of the um, inside the body. Let's say you, you have a cancer inside the body. Um, you can reach it with x-rays, but you have to have high-energy x-rays for it. The Coolidge x-ray tube produces much more, um, a much higher energy radiation, so it's much more amenable to therapy inside the body. And with that, um, I've actually already answered some of the, the, the consequences for market and implementation. So I'm not going to go through that again. And indeed, I, I mentioned the, um, the cancer already. Um, so let, let's, let's imagine that, that you have uterine cancer, cancer of the uterus. It sits very much inside the body, um, equally far from the stomach and the back. Um, and the groin. And the way they would do this is that they, they would send in x-rays into the body um, and the x-rays would then damage the tissue wherever it went. Um, but if you came at it, say, both from the front and from the back, both from the stomach and from the back, then you would reach you would be able to get more radiation to the uterus than to the other parts of the body. So you're doing damage to everything, but you're doing most damage to where the cancer sits. That was the, the thought, and that's the crossfire treatment of internal parts of the body. And here's something that, 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 that just happens um, irrespective of, of um, x-rays. Well, I think... Maybe, you know, I could be wrong actually on this one. The more I think about it, but but one historical development in this period was that cancer grows and replaces tuberculosis as the biggest killer in the Western world, and so people's attitude to cancer was very much like AIDS in the 1990s. It was this novel. I mean, it was 
not completely novel, but it, but because the so many more people had got cancer, it was very very scary in the time around World War One. Um, and and this leads to a huge demand for some kind of treatment of cancer. Cancer is very painful, and it's it's also has a high mortality, depending now, as we would say, on on which kind of cancer. But the the main point is here at the time, it, there was a huge demand for for a treatment for cancer because it it was so scary. Um, could this iteration have been anticipated? I, th I think I've actually already been talking a bit about this. I don't think that it could have. And the take-home lesson, if you're in innovation, is you know you will be thrown for a loop in in real entrepreneurial life. You you work towards some goals, and things happen, and the entire playing field has changed. In this case, it, it was changed. Really, if let's say you're in and if you were working as a, an instrument maker, say, it changed for the better because the market just suddenly, well, or, you know, over a period of years, not decades, became much, much bigger. And I want to go back to our building in, in um, Hamburg, the radi radiological building, um, because it actually integrated the first floor and the second floor, the, the di diagno diagnostics and the therapeutics. So the diagnostics was on the first floor, which I've shown you, and on the second floor there was the uh, therapeutics. And it's this thing that, that changes the, um, the um, calculation that we did uh, with dollars. So we're, we're going to get back to the dollars here in a minute. But, but it's the... Diagnostics and the therapeutics was driven by the same energy source, which was this high voltage equipment sitting in the middle of the building. And let's just go up on the second floor and look at a photo of the second floor. So, and here is a photo of the therapy room on the second floor. And the 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 only point that I want to make really is that it looks just like the diagnostic room downstairs. So you have the bed sitting on rails, you have the x-ray tubes that can be fitted into a particular position, ratcheted into position. And so again, you can do the, the, the division of labor, you can delegate labor to assistants, and um, the, the x-ray tubes can be fed from the same source, the high voltage source in the middle of the building. And so, we're now getting to a much improved calculation. Um, the building gets more expensive now, really, because we're incorporating therapy also, uh, 1.2 million. And now the sales and marketing to convince doctors is, is greater. Also, before we had 10, so now we had 15. There are different doctors to convince now for therapy. Um, therapy is also very different in its nature from, from diagnostics. Um, so 15 million, if, if this had been in um, in the US in the 21st century, you know, you would have had to go through the FDA and the clinical trial and we would have billions of dollars here, but we're talking about 1915 in Germany, so much smaller numbers. Um, the the running costs are not that different from from what we said last time. Um, a little higher staff salaries because we have to run the the therapy room also. But and this is really the key: the revenue, the annual revenue is is now um, almost ten times as much. And and this is because um, you know people patients are prepared to pay much more for therapy when they're faced with a painful and deadly disease. Um, so in terms of just sheer business, radiotherapy is much better than, than x-ray diagnostics. And, and this, this renders the, the calculation a completely different one. So now 
if we have to say the um, sort of sixteen million dollars you start off with, and you know the running costs are well such a small fraction of the revenue that it doesn't really matter. So we basically have a we have three years to get to break even. Three years of of revenue amounts to the the capital invested into it. Last time we did this calculation, we had 20 years, which doesn't make sense. Three years is, is eminently sensible. So we emerge now with a much improved calculation. We emerge in a situation um, where it, it is wise to be in the field of radiology and X-ray technology. Um, but one of the main points, just repeat before we close off here. Um, there is no way that you could have anticipated the market um, developing this way. Um, and this is, this is the nature of, of innovation that, that we've been talking about. We're talking about many, many different iterations of market implementation and technology and that when things go well it can get better and better to the point where a technology makes sense where there is a market where it's implemented in a way that the calculation does make sense um, and in terms of the activity of, of uh, um, an entrepreneur um, a startup uh, uh, person is that you have to make these kinds of calculations all the time, and you have to you have to see where you can improve the the numbers. You need to improve the revenues. You need to reduce the running costs, and you need to reduce the the fixed costs. And um, I hope this is this is the kind of example, the story of the X-rays, that makes it clear um, to you, the students, that. Um, how constant iteration between these three, MIT, the market implementation technology, can get you to something that actually will work in the marketplace. But that it's a, it's a long process, it's a slow process, and you will be thrown for loops with surprises coming from left and right. But it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.